What's up guys? Welcome back to the Malacology Department at the Academy of Natural Sciences. Today, we are talking about sea silk. The golden threads of sea silk have been used throughout history for the clothes of the ruling class. This includes emperors and kings. It is often difficult to separate the facts from the legends when looking at these golden fibers. Today, we will be exploring this history and also the organism behind it all. Sea silk is made from byssus fibers. Byssus fibers are produced by many bivalves that anchor themselves to substrates, rocks, and other surfaces. More specifically, sea silk is made from the byssus of Pina nobilis. Endemic to the Mediterranean Sea, Pina nobilis is one of the largest bivalves in the world. They can live for up to 50 years and grow to over a meter long. They orient themselves vertically with only a third of their body buried in sand or substrate. For this reason, the byssus fibers must be very strong to hold these large bodies upright. The byssus fibers of Pina nobilis are three times finer than a human hair and can grow up to 20 centimeters long. These byssus fibers can be harvested and woven into sea silk. Up to 3,000 shells may be required to produce just one kilogram of byssus fibers. The difficulty of harvesting this material is one of the main reasons it's been so elusive and rare throughout history. You may have heard of the Silk Road. This is a trade route that connected Europe and Asia starting in about 200 BCE. The major good traded along this route was Chinese silks, made from the cocoon fibers of silkworms. However, Europeans also traded a silk of their own along this route, sea silk. Although it was not feasible to produce sea silk on the large scale of Chinese silks, small amounts were traded. When Chinese merchants brought sea silk back to China, they described the source of the material as water sheep with duck-like webbed feet that were said to live beneath the waves of the Roman Empire and occasionally leave tufts of their golden wool on rocks. These stories that sea silk originated from a golden sheep are not unique to the Chinese merchants. Some people have claimed that sea silk is the basis of the golden fleece in the Greek myth Jason and the Argonauts. This myth is one of the oldest examples of the hero's quest. In it, Jason assembles a team of heroes and they set off to find the golden fleece. Jacques Cousteau endorsed the theory that the golden fleece was inspired by sea silk in his 1975 book, The Riches of the Sea. In it, he states that, Byssus was first woven into cloth in the kingdom of Colchis on the Black Sea. Jason and the Argonauts called the elusive golden fleece Colchis, giving rise to the modern theory that the fleece was made from byssus. Despite this theory's endorsement from the great Jacques Cousteau, the idea that the golden fleece was inspired by sea silk is highly contested. Most historians believe that sea silk was not the inspiration for the golden fleece. So what do you think? Was sea silk the inspiration for the golden fleece? Comment down below. The use of the term byssus cloth has been found in many histories and cultures around the world, including many mentions in the Bible and even on the Rosetta Stone. However, the term byssus cloth can mean two different things. First, it can mean sea silk, cloth made from the byssus of Pina nobilis. But the second meaning is more general and refers to any fine linens. For this reason, it's often difficult to determine if byssus cloth refers to sea silk or it refers to just fine linens. The oldest existing fragment of sea silk was found in the ancient city of Aquincum, Hungary. It dates back to the 4th century AD. There are many locations around the Mediterranean Sea where sea silk is known to have been produced, including Sicily and Tunisia. This production of sea silk has been in decline since the 5th century CE, when silkworms were first introduced to Europe. Using silkworms to produce fine cloth was just way easier. Today, harvesting Pina nobilis to produce sea silk is illegal. This is because Pina nobilis has been listed as critically endangered on the IUCN red list. Their populations have been greatly impacted by human activities. This includes things like coastal construction, dredging, and pollution from things like sewage runoff. Also, like many other invertebrates, they are especially vulnerable to the effects of ocean acidification and warming. Given the vulnerable nature of Pina nobilis, sea silk will continue to be an elusive and rare material far into the future. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you would like to see more content related to malacology in the future. Also, don't forget to comment down below what you think about the theory that sea silk is the inspiration for the golden fleece.